what we see on the chart here is the next phase coming is not a pretty phase for the markets. This is where we start to realize that a recession is coming. Hello, everyone. Today, the master trader, Gareth Soloway, again reiterated his point of view that the key level for Bitcoin is about to be breached, which could lead to some astonishing Bitcoin price action and take the largest digital asset towards lowest prices in the recent past. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Bitcoin BTC dollar 27,361 is keeping everyone on their toes when it comes to price trajectory. Where will it go next? After a week in which BTC slash USD fell by 10%, sentiment is getting a reset and traders are eyeing key support levels closer to $25,000. At the same time, consensus is far from unanimous over market health. Some believe that the next phase of upside is around the corner. As macro markets gear up for a new period of crucial data and moves from the United States Federal Reserve, volatility catalysts are waiting in the wings, with Bitcoin potentially not staying calm for long. Beginning April 27, new data will emerge from the U.S., which could deliver a burst of volatility for currently lackluster risk assets. U.S. gross domestic product and jobless claims will precede the March print of the Personal Consumption Expenditures, PCE. Index, with the latter keenly eyed by the Fed for cues on inflation. This month's timing is important. A week later, the Fed will decide on how much, if at all, to raise benchmark interest rates. While the market already believes it knows the answer, this allows any surprises to have an even more pronounced impact on sentiment and price action. According to CME Group's FedWatch tool, as of April 25, there is an 87% chance that the Fed raises rates by 0.25% in early May. I want people to hear what you said, because it's all very well people calling it after the fact. You actually called this before the fact, so let's quickly, let's quickly play it. Level is the technical level, 30,500. Look at what we've done right along here on the chart. Bitcoin has hammered on this over and over again. This is the daily chart. We even had a doji right here, which is a bearish signal, where it popped above and then got slammed down right to that level. I love how it flushed two days ago, rallied back, and now it's flushing again. The level I'm watching for short, for short term bias. So right now you're at resistance, but honestly, resistance can be broken. That's a possibility. But one of the things you have to recognize here is this longer term trend line, which I just discussed with my live traders in office here just 10 minutes ago before I started this broadcast, is that this is a long-term trend, right? You hammered on it here, you hammered on it right here, you broke above it, now you hammered on the opposite side. If we break below 28,500, 400 area, and we confirm using the confirmation signal, that gives us now a downward channel or a break of the trend. Okay, so we did break, we didn't break through 20 or through 30,500. We did break straight down below the 28,500 level, which actually corresponded to what I was saying. I was saying, I think there's too much leverage in the market. The numbers were telling me there was too much leverage in the market. It was getting too frothy. I called for a leg down at 30. I called for another leg down at 29. I called for another leg down at 28. Now 27.4, I'm calling for another leg down. All because the leverage is just not being shaken out of this market. There's the, the leverage chart here. What do you think? Now that we've broken the 28,500, where, where does it go from here? What channels are you watching? What levels are you watching? Yeah, so <clears throat> at least on my chart, right? So notice where we've kind of just stalled here. And again, that corresponds with this area, which if you take a trend line kind of right under the consolidation lows here, and we just drag that across, you're kind of just on top of that level. So right now, this 26,800 level, that's your current support up to 27,000, excuse me, 26,800 to 27,000. Um, but I do think that breaks. What you're starting to do here is form a bearish flag consolidation pattern. So bearish flag is sideways chop which again is kind of eating up the bulls that are buying, but they're not getting a pop out of their buying because sellers are still making that selling price. So essentially what we're looking at is a break of this 26,800 sends us down to 25,000 and 25 will be a monster support. So again, and that would be where you would start to potentially flip into a long position on Bitcoin. Now, again, 
us not breaking above 30,500 and confirming to me tell still tells me that we're still in a bear market. So you just want to be overall careful, but I do expect major support around 25,000. Okay. What would invalidate that for you? Because I mean, I'm looking at the markets, the markets look like we're in a bull run. I look at the, the Kakarant, I look at, at the, 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 the French stock market is at all time highs. The NASDAQ, the S and P are very close. I mean, they, it's five, six, seven percent away from all time highs. What would convince you that we actually are in a bull market? Well, at least at least for Bitcoin, it's that thirty thousand five hundred level, right? So if you can get above that and confirm, that was the psychological level here that kind of denoted the twenty twenty one lows, right? Where that we had that big dip right down to thirty thousand ish, give or take. So again, that would have been a key break point we can see right here. So on a technical basis, that's kind of what I'm looking at, and that's one of the reasons why I expected the market to push us back down on Bitcoin. Now, looking at like the CAC and, and various other indices, I think number one, you have the U.S. markets that are more likely to be in a bear market that that will continue to see selling. You have some issues there in Europe. They're still coming out of some things. But overall, the bottom line is, let's keep in mind that the Federal Reserve has said that we're going to have a recession in the second half of the year. Yes, they said mild, but Rand, you remember transitory, right? So they said transitory and look at what we got. They tell me mild recession. Right away, my mind jumping to probably at least a medium depth recession. Um, and then you have other players like Warren Buffett coming out saying that year over year, one of his retailers sales were down in the last month, 22%. So the consumer is stopping their spending and that's going to create a recession. So risk assets are wildly in m mispriced here and they're going to have to correct sizably. I actually have a downside target this year of 3,300 on the S and P 500. And I also have a downside target for the next year of below 3,000. Couple things. Number one, a recession in this situation could actually be much, much worse. The main issue with that is that how does the Fed lower interest rates aggressively with inflation still north of two percent? Right. I mean, we're still talking four, five, six percent inflation. Now, if it gets down sub three, maybe they have some wiggle room, but we're not at that point yet. So, to me, that's a very scary thing, and 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 stocks and crypto have to be very aware that the Fed may be somewhat handcuffed here if we do hit a recession. And then the big question is, if we get into a recession, how do we get out? Does this market, does the global markets, do they know how to get out of a recession without the Fed printing money? And if the Fed can't print money, do we get in this long-term recession that could be very rough on stocks as well as risk assets like Bitcoin? The bottom line is, is, is the 25,000 is just a major, major pivot point on the chart, right? You had this kind of blip right here. We had the big dip down to this moving average. And then we had the run up where we stalled right there and finally broke up. So that now becomes a big target area of 25,000. But really, if you look down here, I mean, you're talking about getting down to that same moving average as a possibility in the not too distant future. And I do think that, you know, if you look at the froth and I said this and, I, and you kind of mentioned it, how you were saying about liquidity in the market, how much leverage is in the market. Think about how bullish the, the global crypto markets have been, it was very reminiscent to me of when you had crypto at 69,000, that bullish bias in the markets, yet we were here at 30,000. To me, that's a negative divergence. And that's something that we have to be very scared about. If you just uh, humor me, I want to show you one other chart here. It's the Bitcoin dominance chart. And this actually could be telling us that we could be setting up for a drop in the Bitcoin dominance side of things. And what I'm seeing here is a little head and shoulders pattern emerging. And again, if we look at this, you have a little shoulder here, right? And we have this move down here. Here's your head and then down to the shoulder. And then we could be making a little bit of a shoulder. So if you break approximately this area right here on the Bitcoin dominance, you could actually see this coming down, Bitcoin's dominance coming down decently possibly all the way back to this trend line. So what that would mean, it's, it doesn't mean to me that the alts are going to rally. It just means that Bitcoin could actually play catch up to the downside to where the alts were or are. Amount of earnings that are coming out this week. Visually, that's, that's what's coming out this week. Mm -hmm. Do we want good earnings or bad earnings? So here's the question that I want to pose. If we get good earnings, Powell has a license to continue to tighten because we're not in a recession. Everyone's got good earnings. If we have bad earnings, we're going into a recession and then Powell can't continue to tighten anymore. So what do we want? As crypto bros, what do you want? Do you want good earnings or bad earnings? When, when Alphabet reports, when Microsoft reports, when Amazon reports, when Apple reports, what do you want? So I, I think the market wants good earnings here. And the, and the reason the market wants good earnings is that the market realizes with inflation where it is, the Fed only has limited abilities to lower rates. And so if you see earnings falling off a cliff, 
that's going to mean, uh-oh, we're heading towards a recession. The Fed cannot loosen that quickly. Remember, the Fed is priced to actually hike rates in about nine days for their next meeting. So again, what are they going to all of a sudden do a pivot and start dropping rates with inflation still at five or 6%? I just don't see it. So if you start to see really a crack in earnings, it could mean not just a mild recession, as the Fed has said, but actually a worse recession, which again, with the Fed's inability to print money and get us out of it because of inflation, that could be really, really bad. I think what I'm hearing you say is that we want a recession, but we don't want a recession now. We want, we want the recession to come in five months or four months or six months when inflation is back at uh, near 3% levels. I think, yes. I, think that's what I'm, I think that's what I'm hearing you say. That's it. No, that's 100% right. Is is if inflation can get back below or right around 2%, that gives the Fed the wiggle room to be able to lower rates and maybe print money in the future. Up here, they can't do it. I mean, just the bottom line is, you know, we could see a bad situation with the economy. What are they going to do? Print money and then send inflation to 25%. I mean, that's we're going to be the next Venezuela. That's not going to happen. So you do not want a recession in the near term here with inflation this high. All right. So I'm going to ask you again, as I always ask you, in the next week, you're betting down on Bitcoin. Yes, I am. I'm still negative on Bitcoin. Absolutely. Uh, I am negative on the S&P going into earnings. In fact, one more chart I want to show you guys, if I could pop up my screen here. Um, so this is, the this is the monthly chart of the S&P 500. And I'll leave you guys with this thought here. Look at that insane run from COVID, the pullback and the sideways consolidation. The next chart I'm going to put up here is called the psychology of the market chart. And you're going to see it almost is a perfect replica of what we have seen here, all right? So here it comes right now. If you look at this chart here, what I have up on my screen, if we can pop that up, look at the run-up, the pullback, and the sideways oh consolidation. Goodness. So this is fitting perfectly with the complacency period after euphoria and the pullback in the S&P 500. What we see on the chart here is the next phase coming is not a pretty phase for the markets. This is where we start to realize that a recession is coming. The Fed can't get us out of bed here. They can't save the day. And again, that's what I'm looking at. It's amazing how those two charts match up almost tick for tick. For trading for a mosaic asset, caution is warranted for several reasons going forward. First, the rally since mid-March is leading to a sharp increase in bullish sentiment, signaling too much greed among investors. There's also a big negative breadth divergence across multiple time frames in the stock market's rally since mid-March. It warned in the latest edition of its regular newsletter, The Market Mosaic, released on April 23. An accompanying chart showed declining bullishness across S&P 500 stocks, marking a potential change of environment compared to Q1. Just take a look at the percent of stocks trading above their 50-day moving average MA. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.